Local productions on QTV are made possible with support from viewers like you. Thank you. Hello everyone, I'm Junior Doan. Welcome to Junior Doan's The Spark. I'm thrilled you could join us. Today my guest is entrepreneur Sue McKellar. Sue is the owner of Sue's Interior Design and Paper Moon Events Specialist in Midland, Michigan. Welcome, Sue. So I'm really interested, when you got the yen to open a store, open a business, what was it? Well, it was actually a dare from one of my neighbors. When we had moved to Midland in 1971, and I said, where can I get children's clothes? And she said, well, there was one store. And I went there. It wasn't exactly what I was looking for. And so I was complaining. She said, well, why don't you open your own store? I'm like, well, OK, maybe, maybe I will. So I started researching it. And next thing I know, I was in the children's clothing business, which was my first one. How did you know what to look for to educate yourself to make the right steps to open a business? Well, I asked a lot of people. I had a lot of good mentors. As far as the brands of clothing, I looked in what I had been buying my children and found out where to get them in New York and headed there and started buying things for the store. Oh, my goodness. And was the market the way you thought it was going to be? It actually was very successful from the beginning. And uh, researching location was a little interesting. It was the new Circle Mall, which is now the police station in Midland. Yes. But it had a lot of family-oriented uh, businesses that were going in there, or to go on a back street downtown. And I felt for the best exposure that the mall with the other stores, the men's the shoes, the women's, would be the best place to go for a children's store. So that's where I ended up. But you had an earlier experience when you were a teenager. Well, yes. <laughs> when I was in eighth grade, I took an adult education class in cake decorating, which led to uh, my spending money and my part-time business besides going to school all through the uh, junior high school, high school, and into college. And from then on, it was something I always enjoyed doing. So you must have a lot of energy. Uh, uh, yes, I do have a lot of energy. And I don't drink coffee. It's only the chocolate. <laughs> this is my only little <laughs> bit of caffeine. It gets you going? <laughs> yeah. How much sleep do you require to keep going? Well, that's a lot of people say I never sleep. But um, I get five to six hours a night. Yes. Sometimes less when we're doing Something. events. <laughs> and tell us about your later businesses, which are quite successful and varied. Well, during one of my buying trips for the Calico Cat Children's Store, I had extra time, and I happened to be in Chicago. So I went upstairs to the Merchandise Mart just to look around. And I saw all these interesting paper goods, stickers, lots of things that we didn't have in Midland, Michigan. So I came back home, and the moon was out, and I was in the plane. And I, that night, I ended up writing a business proposal for um, a new store, which turned out to be the Paper Moon where we had all kinds of paper goods, stickers, theme things, and that was the next business. But by then I was educated. I knew a lot more where to go, how to do it, what to set up. And uh, I ended up having seven stores in seven years. And then what, something had to go, because with three small children at the time, I was in a different city every day. And so I sold the children's store and kept expanding the paper moons. Yeah, which is big. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very big. Um, did you apply for loans to finance this? How, how do you start a business? Where do you get the money to do this kind of thing? Well, that was interesting. <laughs> um, my friend that had told me I should go do it, we started out as maybe going into partnerships because she had the money and 
she said I had the expertise, well, <laughs> <laughs> such as it was. But uh, I talked to my parents and told them what I was thinking about, and they thought I was crazy at the time, but they've always encouraged me. And they said, oh, my one bit of advice is do it on yourself. Don't have a partner, because that could be, that could be the end of a, a positive business. So then they told me that my grandfather had left me some money, and so I used that to start my first business. <laughs> and then Paper Moon, did you have to borrow for that, or you could self-finance? Um, I, I used the Calico Cat as equity, oh, yes. and so I still had that, so I was able to get an easy business loan from that. So I've always been pretty lucky that way. And then you lateralized into home design. Yes, well, design, it's kind of my passion, so whether I'm doing a, a corporate event or in an interior, and people kept asking me, you know, can you help me with this, can you help me with that, and I'd been doing that for a long time, and then I had the opportunity to help someone do their whole new build of a house a couple years ago, and so I did that, and, uh, you know, then word of mouth started spreading, and pretty soon I said, well, I think I better make this a a full-fledged business, so that's what I've been doing. And I understand that you got it into Airbnb and some of these other overnight rentals. Mm -hmm. Give us a little story on that, a little background. Well, we were looking for something for additional retirement income, and so we have purchased a couple of houses, totally gutted them and redid them, and now have them on HomeAway, Airbnb, and and it, it, it's kind of fun because you're able to meet a lot of interesting people. But, uh, and then I get to do different designs and different things, different, um, different types of interiors, contemporary and, um, you know, all just different than what I have for my personal. More home. fantasy. Yes, exactly. Or, or anyway, yeah. a, 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 what do I want to say, a design, ideology or a design concept. Right. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, how do you edit for good people who come into these things or because you're not there it's not as threatening? Or are you there? Oh, <laughs> when they're building? No, when they're renting. Oh, when they're renting. Yes, overnight um, or it, however Air, Airbnb and HomeAway uh, do some research and that's why I chose to go online and have them do that rather than have my, you know, me do it myself. And um, so they, they kind of do background checks and check their Facebook and make sure they're, you know, not posting something very strange. And, and, uh, and then you have the opportunity then to uh, say yes, you'll accept them or no, you won't. So um, that's, that's how it works. Do you establish the price? Yes, yes. They, they give you suggestions. Oh, good. Um, but, you know, in my opinion, they were low for what we were offering, and, and I haven't had any trouble renting everything, so that's Are been that good. many visitors to Midland? You know, it's amazing. It's it amazing really is. to me. Yes, and, you know, I've had a couple uh, over a month at a time that have stayed that, um, because there's not much that's a furnished um, apartment or condo or anything like that. And then our other ones are up on a lake um, just north, north of Midland a ways. And, uh, and then we get the seasonal renters that want to be summer lake people. Do you give them a minimum of a week or two that they have to rent for? Um, in Midland, no, because a lot of the business people oh. are only in for a day and I didn't yeah. want to discourage that. But up north, yes, three day minimum. Three day minimum. Mm -hmm. And but then you're responsible for cleaning and Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's the part that's not as fun. Yeah, you're and in management in that case. Well, we bet so in the last couple of years we've been able to do it. So we'll see how if that continues. But um. So you're very experienced at this point, right? So it's easier. Because it is. you have a design flair and you have a business background. Right. But if you were speaking to someone who was 20 or 23 or anyway, under, without that kind of experience, how would you advise them about getting an idea or checking out if that idea has possibility, real possibilities? Well, 
um, they can go to the small business um, here at Delta College, actually, and there's a lot wealth of information here that they can check out. And there's seminars that they offer all the time of starting your own business and getting bank loans and all kinds of things. So um, I would probably recommend that they do something like that. And then, and then talk to people that are in business because having a mentor or two or three or four are wonderful. And you, know, you can even set up your own private board from a lawyer, a, a finance person, and maybe a marketing person that might be willing to help you in all those areas just mm, that's you know, very to get someone to started. Think about. Yeah, it's, it's a great, great opportunity. And I know I would be open to the idea if someone came to me. And a lot of people have come to me <laughs> asking right. me questions. And, and sometimes I was very positive, and sometimes I was a little discouraging knowing how the Midland market is. Oh, invaluable advice. It is, yes, it is. And there's so many business people like me that I know would be more than willing to help someone get started. What an American thing to do to help <laughs> someone else, huh? That's really Yeah, well, that's what America's admirable. all about. It's, you know, it's about um, you know, helping others and, and being able to do what you want to do. So when you had these children and added on children, uh, what, what values did you try to teach them? Well, that uh, good work, work ethics and, um, and you know, honesty, integrity, and um, just self, being self-sufficient and being able to grow up to be good adults, which I'm proud to say all of them are. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> yes. That's an you. achievement. It that's is. a contribution. Yes. I feel that's my biggest achievement. Yes, and con biggest contribution mm -hmm. maybe, too. Mm -hmm. So at this point of your life, you're thinking about retirement, you want the extra income, you've done a lot in design, you've done a varied kind of thing. What do you, how do you know when it's enough of one thing and you want to take something else on? Well, sometimes it's just the economy and, right. or the time of year. In the paper moon business, uh, December, January, February are slow, and so, um, uh, and then a lot of people are wanting to do design things during the winter, oh. and so that's kind of been how that really has developed as far as the time frame. And then in the summer, you get busy again with weddings and graduation parties and that type of thing, and people are vacationing, so they're not as apt to want to do design things. Yeah. And huh. So it's, it's kind of economy-based, too, <laughs> cyclical. Yes, it's cyclical. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, so would you recommend people keep a certain amount of money back for the downturn? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> or the less business? <laughs> it's always good to have, you know, at least, you know, six months back up to keep you going. Because, you know, things like, you know, 9-11, which totally devastated oh. our business. I yes. mean, it was, it was, it was horrible. Yes. And, you know, so you had Paralyzed. to think. Yes. Every, all, every corporate, you know, quit everything that they were doing. We were doing two or three corporate events a week down to nothing. And, I mean, that just really kills your business. So, uh, I'm, you know, luckily we have a lot of energy and a lot of talent. I mean, we were painting houses for people. We did anything we could to keep going until the economy started to come back for a while. That was quite a while, though, wasn't it? Was. it? Yeah, it was. How long would you say it was? Probably two years. Yes. And the corporate events and business still isn't back yet. And so that's why, you know, we're really heavy into linen rental and, you know, tables, chairs, things that you would need that aren't readily available online because people want to touch and feel and <laughs> that type of thing. So, um, so that's a really big part of our business. It's changed from the very first stickers and paper plates into, you know, you know, it it, it, it grew. So yeah, yeah. Has style of the entertaining or corporate get-togethers changed? Do you see a certain pattern? Well, corporate doesn't have the budget to do the types of things they used to do. I mean, we were we did events out in Las Vegas and and Ohio and all North Carolina, all over the place that they would fly us to do the event. And, um, 
and and now that that's not something that's you right. know that they're into anymore. <laughs> and from a personal hospitality point of view, what are people's um, what do they seek your services for? What's popular? Well, the biggest thing is weddings. Weddings, you know, wedding showers, baby showers, um, that type of thing. Pretty much, um, I mean, we do a lot of linens for funerals and and. We work with the hotels and the art center and, and supply them with more specialty linens than you would get from um, just a typical linen service, so. Yes, oh, wonderful things, wonderful things. So uh, you have to, uh, as all people have to do, whether it's personal or, or business, have to be of your time, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's something that I wish I always had more of, but. Um, you do what you do. I think you do what you do, but, and it, it, it takes a certain knowing to know when you have to change direction and maybe more um, in a business or beyond that. Yeah, I think you have to have a lot of foresight and figure out you know, how you're gonna reinvent yourself more or less um, to suit what, what the need is in the, in the community where you are. I mean, we could probably be a whole lot more wealthy if we were in a big city, but we chose not to deal with, you know, the traffic and all the things that are down there and stay in a small town, which we love, yeah. and um, just do what we do and enjoy it and hopefully a good service. Are you service. from the area? No, I grew up down in the uh, Detroit, Birmingham area, but I've been here since 71, so I feel like it's home. What brought you here? Um, well, my first husband was a teacher, and um, after Michigan State, he got a job in Saginaw, and uh, we came to Midland, so that, that brought me here. You've seen a lot of change here. Oh, yes. <laughs> a lot of people are afraid of change, but I think it's a growing experience and gives you a chance to, you know, challenge yourself. Talk more about that. About challenging yourself? Yeah. <laughs> well... I think a lot of people are afraid to follow their dreams and they're afraid of change, but, and a lot of people kind of settle rather than go after their passion. And I think, um, I think people shouldn't be afraid to do that, that, you know, if they really think they want to try something, don't let somebody put you in a box or, or give you direction when it's not something that you really feel that you want to do and just give it a try. I mean, you can always bounce back and get something else, but I always say, I have never looked back and say, I, I wish I would have. Well, you did. <laughs> <laughs> and so I just kept, kept trying different things and enjoying them. And then when I wanted to change, I'd try something new. Do you find this whole internet culture uh, tempt you or talk your, your thinking at all? Well, it's very challenging. It's very hard on, um, you know, a brick and mortar building and yes. small businesses because it's so convenient for people to go online and get what they need. And so, and then the social media, you know, keeping up with Facebook and Twitter and, and LinkedIn and all those things, you know, you really need a, a staff person that can just totally do yeah. that. And, and that's really hard because I don't have the time to do that myself, and just finding somebody that can, you know, help along those lines, um, you have to have it. And it w we're not the best at it, I can say, because we just haven't had somebody that uh, can help us through that. But um, it's basically it's, necessary it's now. Necessary. Is what you're saying? Yeah. Yes. And and, and it's hard. Um, you know, the internet's putting out a lot of businesses and. And it'll be too bad because when their order doesn't come in, they're knocking on our door wanting us to right, fill, fill in or, or fill in. And then they don't understand why we don't have it. So, I mean, we used to have like 70 feet of cards, but we have only like a foot of cards now because people don't send actual cards. They email or, you know, send a virtual card or something. So that you just have a drop off. Yeah, that is really oh, yeah. surprising. It's huge, huge. Yeah, and and then you know when we first started in the business, you didn't have you know the Midland Mall wasn't here. Yes, and you know there are a lot of things now. 
with the superstores, you can get all those things that we first started with in the one-stop shopping when you're grocery store shopping. So, um, so you, you just have to adjust and find a different niche. So, Who buys the cards? Is it age denominated? Anymore? Yes. Um, well, oddly enough, we used to have quite humorous cards. Yes. And so when somebody's maybe having a milestone birthday, they'll come in for one of those humorous cards. But yes, they're more the 40, 50, 60 and on up age. And, um, and that's what they're looking for at, at the time. So, but they'll I say, oh, I haven't been here in, in five, 10 years. And I'm like, I know, that's why, yeah. we, don't <laughs> have, that's why we don't have that many cards anymore. So. It's interesting. I ask myself, I still read newspapers, even though I may have read the same thing on the device. Right. Um, and I'm, you know, I, I feel, I, I think everything is quick, quick. But where are the moments when you have in your life, you sit down to read a letter rather than an email or sit down to read the newspaper? So mm -hmm. I try to find, I wouldn't call it balance, but it feeds different parts of my nature, which are, I need to know, I need to know now, I need to know <laughs> deeply, and I want to know what I might also run into if I did, you know, it's like wandering the library versus going in and say, just this. Yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah. So uh, coming to, to this point in your life, what would you like to try that you maybe haven't really precipitated into action? Hmm. I guess I don't have anything right now. I've done the children's store, I've done the bed and breakfast, I've, d I've done the, the retail store, I've done the interior decorating. Um, I learned to fly, that was one of the things that was on amazing. my bucket list. And um, I, I'm pretty content right now. So um, just being able to have time to spend more with the kids and grandkids. And do you feel called to do that? Um, I, in the beginning, I felt kind of guilty that I couldn't because so much of our work is on the weekends. Yeah. And, uh, and that's when, you know, they're, they, ha they would have time to do things. But I, I've gotten over that, and, and <laughs> they understand. <laughs> and so, um, you know, but I make the important things, so. Are they nearby, or do you have to travel? have to travel. We only have one that's in Midland and one's in Germany, one's in, in New oh. York, two are down in Bloomfield Hills and one in Ohio. So um, that makes it harder too. So, but uh, you know, FaceTime's wonderful. <laughs> yeah, and you use it? <laughs> yes. On a regular basis? And we try, yeah. We try. So talk to me a little bit. My friends who have in-law children or even grandchildren feel they can't say anything. They can't give advice. You have to be approving. Is that your conclusion as well? Uh, I don't think so. I mean, they may call me to figure out how to fix the hot water heater or the furnace or, you know, or something mechanical or, or uh, my a couple of my kids are just redoing their houses, so I'm helping them do their houses. And, and their spouses are okay with that. And I, I always kind of watch that fine line where I don't want to feel that I'm, you know, stepping over their bounds. And, and the kids, um, I, I give my advice whether they want it or not sometimes. Well, tell us about that. <laughs> Let's hear that. Well, you know, sometimes if I feel that uh, there's an important family event and they're staying home because there's a sporting event they want to go to. You know, it's trying to convince them that the family is really important. They can always go to a, a sporting event or, or you know, a, a baseball game or something, but the family's not always going to be around together on special occasions. So I make it known <laughs> in a nice way, of course. That's, it is tricky how to, to say that. Mm -hmm. I feel being of the older generation, we are the setters of tradition. It's our responsibility. Yes. And, and luckily, a couple of our, our kids are taking over that responsibility and are doing the family gatherings and that type of thing. So um, it, it is kind of nice to see that they learned that, that um, those kinds of things 
should be respected and the tradition should continue. You know, our society doesn't really value older people. I do. I've always liked older friends. I figured they survived the decade <laughs> I made. <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> they have a report from the front. <laughs> but um, now that, that I am that group, I feel really a strong responsibility to hold the space, you know, mm -hmm. or be available or, you know, take things higher than maybe they are able to, to see. It give them something to think about in any case they might not have had before. But maybe I was always like that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, thank you. So we have um, a lot to learn from Sue. One is it's very helpful to, <laughs> to have a lot of energy and not sleep more than five hours a night or six hours a night. Secondly, she has a great ability to see opportunity and to take it on. That is to say, figure out what it takes to get it done and factor in the people and knowledge that she needs to support the steps necessary to the goal. So we can apply that in any area of our life. Uh, thirdly, she really um, is very open to change. She values it in herself. You saw, we know, she was buying for the, the children's store. All of a sudden, she had a few hours. She, she found some stickers, and all of a sudden, it's a whole new idea. That kind of fluidity is important in your life. So use it. Do something nice for someone you know. Do someone nice for someone you don't know, and I'll see you next week. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you so very much. Good job. Fast. <laughs> To contact Junia, send her an email at juniadonesthespark at gmail.com. For more information, program schedules, and news about future guests, go to www.juniadonethespark.com. Thank you for joining us. See you next time on Junia Dones the Spark. Local productions on QTV are made possible with support from viewers like you. Thank you.